Hello and welcome back to the Embracing Your Powers podcast. Today we're going to be talking about money mindset and how to update your money mindset in order to help you have a better relationship with money and overall make more of it. If you are a struggling small business owner like me, you probably want to make more money. And part of the reason that you don't could be because of your relationship to it and the limiting beliefs that you have surrounding it. You're likely pushing the money that you want to make away subconsciously or at least self-sabotaging yourself so that you can stay in the same situation that you are right now. Which sounds crazy probably because you're like, well, I hate the job that I'm in. I hate the house that I'm in. I hate that I'm living paycheck to paycheck and barely making it throughout the month. Like I really want to make more money. So why can't I? And that's likely because consciously you're like, I need to make more money, but in your subconscious mind, which is like more what drives you and it's more in the back of your head, it's stuff that you learned when you were little and you kind of don't even realize is running the show here, but your subconscious is what's running the show. And that is likely where all of your limiting money beliefs have come from that you got from childhood. And if your subconscious beliefs are not on board with your conscious beliefs, then you are not going to be making very much money. So I want to talk a bit about how I started healing myself limiting beliefs and kind of get you guys introduced into the world of manifesting and making more money and healing your subconscious beliefs so that hopefully you can be a more successful business owner and start making more money. Now I used to be extremely stressed about money and I frequently still stress about it, but it used to be way, way worse. Like I'm talking way worse. At one point I got so stressed about life in general, but money was a part of it that I sent myself to the ER and had a month long period where I was trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with me. I did so many different things. We thought maybe I had diabetes. I was chilly. I was dizzy. I was like not able to sleep. It got to the, so bad to the point where if I get stressed enough, my hand, this hand specifically will go numb. And like sometimes my face will go numb. Like I was in a point in my life where I was so incredibly stressed that we thought I had uh, MS, multiple sclerosis. I think I'm saying that right. Because parts of my body was just literally becoming tingly. I had a scan done, a whole body scan. I forget what it's called. But like I had a whole body scan done to get my brain scanned. Like it, there was a month long period there where I was so incredibly stressed out about money and life in general that we thought something was seriously wrong with me. And in the end, it turned out that it was just panic attack and something else was wrong, but like totally irrelevant and it wasn't a huge deal and it was super easy to fix. But the main part of that was me being so anxious that I made myself sick. And so once I found out that it pretty much just came down to stress, I knew something needed to change because I could not keep living my life that way. So that's kind of what got me into reading personal development books. And I'm going to link some of my favorite ones down below. But specifically for this podcast, I want to talk about this one right here. You are a badass at making money. I've definitely mentioned this before. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast, but I've definitely mentioned this book before in multiple places, because if you are trying to heal your money mindsets and make more money and you're a small business owner, or even if you're not a small business owner and you just want to make more money, this is definitely the book that took to read because it is it is just fantastic. It's by Jensen Zero. I'll definitely be linking this one down below. And that's the one that I kind of want to recommend to you the most and talk a little bit about kind of like what I learned because that's what started me healing all of my negative money mindsets and what kind of started the transformation in my business. The good thing about that book is she gives you journal prompts at the end of pretty much every chapter. Like she gives you suggested money mantras. I don't know if you're gonna be able to read that, but she gives you suggested money mantras at the end of every chapter so that you can say them. This one says, I love money because I love myself. And then she says, give at least 10 answers to the following. Make a list of all the reasons why you deserve money. Make a list of some beautiful things that have happened in the world thanks to money. Make a list of all the awesome things and experiences money will add to your life. And then make a list of how you being rich will benefit others. And so one of the first things that she talks about in the book and one of the first things that I started to do is you have to understand that money is not the root of all evil. And I'm sure you've heard that saying a million times and you may have even said it yourself. Money is the root of all evil. C cut that out. No, it's not. It, it, it just isn't. And fact is money is nothing but energy. Money is nothing but a tool that we use. And I know I'm sure you've heard all of the cliches like money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil. But really, money kind of does grow on trees. Like it, in a way it does because it's all around us. Everything that we had, we had to have bought with money. This book I bought with money. This case that holds all of my SD cards was bought with money. This camera that I'm talking to you on was bought with money. Everything that we interact with and touch was bought with money. 
So you don't go a day without interacting with something that money was able to give you because money is just there to give you things. And that includes experiences too. You can't go on a vacation if you don't have money. So money isn't good or evil on its own. It's neutral. We as humans give that meaning to it by what we do with it. If you steal money out of somebody's pocket, the energy around that money is bad. But if you turn around and you give it to your favorite charity, now all of a sudden the money is good. But what changed? The money itself didn't. It was worth $20 when you stole it and it's gonna be worth $20 when the charity that you gave it to spent it. The money itself did not change. What changed was the way that you got it and what you did with it. It was the energy or the situation around it that changed. You stealing it is bad, but giving it away to a charity is good. However, it still equals $20 no matter what. So money itself is not good or evil. It's what you do with it is good or evil. If you are a good person, and if you're listening to this podcast, I know that you are, you having a bunch of money isn't going to all of a sudden make you evil because that's a lot of what Huey here too as well, right? Is that rich people are bad. They've done bad things to get their money, whatever. Rich people are gross, snobby, et cetera, better than us, whatever you want to call it. If you want to be rich, because let's be honest, you probably do. Everybody wants more money. Then you're going to also have to stop talking bad about people who have money because are some rich people bad? Yes, of course. But are some poor people or middle-class people bad? Yes. But the difference isn't how much money they have. The difference is who they are as people. If you are a good person, you getting a million dollars is not all of a sudden going to make you turn evil. Hopefully, hopefully you're still going to be a good person and you don't let the money and the fame and the fortune or whatever you have go to your head and you're still going to be a good person afterwards. Money is just a tool to get us somewhere that we want to go or get something that we want to have. That is it. So once you take away the taboo around surrounding money, you'll hopefully start to feel better about making it. And like I said, the same thing goes for rich people as well, or just people in general with a lot of money, upper class people. If you think all rich people are bad and you think they've all done bad things to get their money, then why would you want to become them? And that's part of the subconscious beliefs that we have to get rid of. Because if you think rich people are bad and you want to have more money and become rich, you're not going to want to become a bad person. So you're to subconsciously push the money away that you want because it's not a bad thing to want more money because let's be real here we all want money that's not a bad thing that is not greedy that is not selfish that's okay we all want more money because money helps with the ease of life if you don't have money you can't buy groceries if you don't have money you can't have a house if you don't have money you can't go on vacation or pay for your kids college fund or buy a car or have internet or do any of these things. So having more money is not inherently a bad thing. But if you are bad mouthing rich people and you are turning your nose up every time you see an influencer post a picture of their brand new bag, their designer bag they bought with their hard earned money, then how do you expect to become rich? How do you expect to become one of those people? And now I'm not saying you need to have a mansion with a pool complete with an indoor water slide. And I'm not saying that you have to have enough money to buy the designer bags. That might not be the type of rich that you want to be. I know for me personally, I am not interested in that. You may want to have just enough to get by or at least a little bit more than just trying to get by because I'm sure getting by is what you're doing right now. You might want to be able to go on the vacation you want, have a nice house, save for retirement, and send your kids to a good school. Everyone's version of rich is going to be different, but also don't limit yourself. Are you upset that the influencer is showing off her designer bag because you think it's a waste of money and you don't want that? Or are you upset because you're jealous and you wish you had the money to be able to buy designer bags and have a walk-in closet with places to store your designer bags and your shoes and your nice clothes and color coordinate them and all these different things? Either option is fine, but it's not selfish or bad to want more out of life. It is not greedy to want to be rich. And the first step to making more money is allowing yourself to dream about all the things you want, even things that you're not sure that you can have right now, even things that are so far out of the realm of possibility for you that you can't imagine even having them. Instead, you want to think about all the good things that you can do with money. And that's when you're going to start to be able to manifest more into your life. For me personally, I don't want a big house. I don't want to want a bunch of big fancy cars. I want a nice house with room for my kids. I want to set them up for a good life. 
I want to have a house on the lake and the ability to say yes when they want to go on field trips or go to McDonald's or give them experiences for the rest of their life. I want to be able to save for retirement. I want to donate to charities that I love. And I want to be able to start a business or start a fund where I can give grants to people who want to go to college or to lower income or middle class people who are like minorities or LGBTQ plus or people like that. I want to give grant grants to people to start their small business or be able to go to school and get higher education for college. And the more money I have, the more money I can give back. I currently can't do those things because I don't have enough money. And money will allow me to be able to help all of these people that I want to help, including myself, because it's not selfish to want to help yourself either. It's all about the life that you want to have. And there is absolutely no shame if you want the big house with the luxury of you. Go for it. Allow yourself to dream that and allow yourself to not feel guilty to want to have that. No shame whatsoever. Whatever it is in your dream life, you want to be able to have the confidence to go after it and not have those limiting beliefs holding you back. Now, the next step is to start uncovering the way you think about money and really understand why you think the way that you think. Because sometimes we work on autopilot, as I mentioned, subconscious beliefs. So basically the way that it works is your brain, your subconscious brain forms by the time that you are seven, and then your conscious brain kind of forms around that. So your subconscious brain is the part of your brain that you don't really know is there, and it's stuff that you picked up when you were a kid. So for example, what did your parents tell you about money? What was the vibe growing up around it? Like, how did you, how do you feel currently when you think about money or when you think about wanting more of it? Sometimes we hear things so many times that they just become fact, like rich people are evil. They're all greedy. Wanting money is greedy. Money is the root of all evil. It doesn't grow on trees, different stuff like that. Sometimes we don't even believe that as adults, but we're so used to hearing it that we just kind of take it as fact. And so you want to break down all of those thoughts that you have about money, journal it out, figure out what did mom and dad think about money when I was growing up? What was I surrounded by? And sometimes for me, I don't remember a lot about what was said specifically, but I remember how I felt. And so journaling that out can really help you unconsciously uncover those beliefs that you have. And then you can bring them to the light and say, do I actually believe this? Is this actually true? Or is this something that I've just been telling myself and something that has been running my life that I didn't even know about? And the more you go through your beliefs, the better you're gonna start to feel. So for example, if you saw as a kid, your mom and dad were always fighting about money and your dad would get so upset about it that your dad would walk out of the house and he would leave and he'd go somewhere because he was just so angry he couldn't handle dealing with a conversation anymore. Your kid brain might have seen that and said, money makes people that I love fight with each other and my dad leaves me or just leaves, like people leave because of money. So your brain took that as a fact. Even though it isn't, it's a subconscious belief that you know have it and it's now, it's now lodged in your brain and kind of controls everything that you do almost. Now you don't want money in your life because you think that the people that love you will leave. Or if your mom constantly said that we don't have the money for that, you may now think that money is scarce and you might freeze up every single time you have to spend money, even if it's something small. Now for me, this was huge. If I saw that my kid, my cat food, was getting low for my cats or like their cat litter or just something really, really small. I would freak out or not as I freak out, but I kind of tense up a little bit and be like, oh God, I have to actually buy this thing. Do we really have the money for this? Because I can't, I have to feed my cats, right? Like I don't have a choice. Or if I wanted to pick up something small for dinner before I got a couple of ingredients or whatever, I would have to go out and buy things. And it's just like, oh, do we really have the money for this? Should I get something else for dinner? Maybe I should just make mac and cheese or make something smaller or whatever. And even though it's a small amount of money, your brain says, we don't have enough money for that. That is your immediate instant reaction. And so you ask yourself, is this worth buying? Can I afford this for every interaction that you have or everything that you need to buy? And the answer is, of course, yes. You do probably have money to buy cat food. Hopefully, at least, at least I did. You do have the money to buy cat food. You do have the money to buy these things. But when you have this limiting belief, every little bit of money you spend could feel like the end of the world. And once you start to notice these things, make sure you call yourself out on your bullshit a little bit. Call yourself out on it and then write new beliefs to tell yourself. This is how you're gonna rewrite those subconscious beliefs that you have. Once you realize what they are, now it's time to bombard yourself with the opposite or a better belief. If your belief is there's never enough money to go around, write the opposite affirmation and say money is always flowing to me from so many avenues. Even if you don't believe it right away, keep telling yourself that until you do. And 
make sure it resonates with you on top of it. Because if you don't feel it in your bones when you say it, if you like have a subconscious belief and you write something out and you're like, that doesn't really resonate with me, rewrite it until you do. And sometimes it will take a little bit because there might be another subconscious belief blocking it. So like sometimes when you say I am beautiful or I am smart or you give yourself an affirmation, sometimes you're just like if your mind immediately goes, no, you're not. There might be like another subconscious belief that's blocking it. You don't want to just keep hammering subconscious beliefs onto yourself, but then also end it in the back of your head. with like, yeah, right. Or that's not true or something like that. So that might mean that you have a little bit more work to do. There's a little bit more subconscious beliefs that like you have to go in deeper to really figure out, well, why don't I believe this? And then write the affirmation to then help you figure it out. And like I said, it's going to take time. Sometimes you might go, yeah, right. But then the more you say it to yourself, the more you might start to believe it. So say that to yourself as often as you can. And then on top of that, look for proof, even the smallest proof. Look for proof because your brain always wants to be right. So if you start looking for proof in your life to prove these affirmations to yourself, you're going to start to believe them quicker and they're going to start to become your subconscious beliefs and push out the negative ones that you no longer want. So one of the things that I said is money comes to me for so, from so many avenues. That's one of the beliefs that I had that I tried to at least make myself believe. And I randomly got a check once for $25 out of the blue, was not expecting it. It was super weird. And at first, my husband and I were like, what if this is fraud? Like, what if we cash it and then they can somehow, or we like put it in our account and they can somehow get our information? Well, we went to the bank and they were also super confused. And they're like, we understand why this is weird, especially if you weren't expecting it. We're gonna send it to our fraud department and we'll let you know. Turns out the check was legit and we were able to go back and cash it. And it came from an urgent care that I went to months ago. They sent me a check for $25. Why? I have no idea. Maybe overpayment. The only thing that I can think of, and this is funny because this was the same urgent care that I went to months ago. So remember how I said I went to a lot of doctors and different stuff like that? Well, I sent myself to the ER when I was super overstressed and I didn't realize at the time I was stressed. And I had felt so bad the next couple of days. Like I couldn't sleep. I, every time I tried to lay down, I was super dizzy. I was like nauseous and just, it was awful. And so uh, the ER told me make a regular doctor's appointment. I got so sick over the weekend that I went to the urgent care and this urgent care was there at 8 a.m., super scared. The nurse was so disrespectfully rude to me and actually yelled at me for being there because they're like, what else do you want us to do? And I don't understand what the issue was, but it was awful. She she yelled at me for some reason for being there. So in my head, this is like compensation from the universe because of that super rude nurse. But either way, it doesn't matter if it was like overpayment or whatever, it doesn't matter. Universe, money came to me through the universe and that solidifies to me that money can come from everywhere. Because one of the things that she talks about in this book is everything comes from, she calls it universal intelligence, same thing. You can call it God, you can call it universe, you can call it spirit, you can call it whatever the heck you wanna call it. I just call it the universe. And she says that money comes through the universe. You get it from people, but all of the money and everything comes from universal intelligence. So in my head, it came from the universe through the ER. And if you're in business, you can get money from so many places. And it's actually really fun to think about where it could come from. Basically what you need to do is you kind of have to raise your vibration to match the frequency of whatever amount of money that you want to make. Because as I said, money is just energy. It's just frequency. So you need to raise your vibration to match that of the money that you want to make. And so it's a good idea to keep your eyes open a bit for all options. Because one of the examples that she gives in the book is if you want to take your grandma to an overseas knitting competition or knitting convention and you have the Star Wars action figure that you want to sell, you don't want to focus on selling the action figure to anybody if you need $48,000 or whatever the heck it was. You want to raise your vibration, your energy, your frequency to attract $48,000 because that buyer is out there somewhere. You just have to raise your frequency to match the amount of money that you want to make. So you could do this and just come up with different scenarios in your head of how can you make more money? What if your favorite brand emails you tomorrow and asks you to do a thousand dollar brand deal? That could happen. What if you try going on DoorDash? Cause I did DoorDash for a long time. What if you go out and you DoorDash or you Grubhub or you Postmates or you do one of the whatever shipped and someone sends you a massive tip when you give their order? Maybe they send you a hundred dollar tip. Is that gonna happen? Maybe not. 
but it could because why not? And so when you're healing your money beliefs, it's kind of fun to think about all of the different ways that money can come to you. You could find $100 on the street tomorrow, or you could get a random check sent to you for $25, because why not? And even if it's a small amount of money, you wanna be grateful for getting that money. We just recently got another check sent to us because Intuit TurboTax in 2018 defrauded people for paying for a service that they shouldn't have had to pay for and they got sued and they were sending out checks to people. We just got another check out of nowhere for no reason and the money was sent to us through universal intelligence and even though it's only like a $29 check, that's $29 that I didn't have before and you wanna be grateful for that. Hopefully that makes sense. And you also start to realize how your friends and family talk about money as well when you start to uncover these limiting subconscious beliefs that you have. And this goes back to the podcast episode that we had a couple weeks ago, I don't remember when, where I talked about how people influence you, the people closest to you, how much they can actually influence you. If your broke friends are constantly complaining about how broke they are, and you are also complaining about how broke you are, you're going to have a hard time manifesting money into your life because your energy, your vibration, and your frequency is lowered. And as soon as you start to realize the cynical nature that people have around money and how you don't agree with it anymore, that's going to start to raise your vibration. For example, me and my sister were talking about Mr. Beast. And if you don't know who he is, he's basically a YouTuber that gives away a bunch of money. He's very charitable. He does these crazy videos. He's bought car lots out and given away all the cars. He's bought grocery stores out and given away all the groceries. He just recently posted a video about helping a thousand blind people see again, meaning he's done this twice. So he's helped 2000 blind people see again. And my sister says, oh, well, they only do that so they can get a tax right off. Like they only do that so they don't have to pay taxes on all the money that they make. And my response to that is, so what? Who cares? Who, who cares? What does it matter? Why are we focusing on the negative, which really isn't a negative, why are we focusing on the bad side of it and trying to find the negative situation on it? Like, oh, they don't care about the people that they're actually helping. They only want a tax write off. First of all, how do you know that? I don't really follow him, but I see him on Twitter and like, he's huge. Everyone really probably knows who this guy is. And he seems like he's genuinely a nice person and he's helping all of these people. Who cares if he gets a tax write-off? What does that matter? Are there some people who probably only give to charities because they want a tax write-off? Yes. Is Mr. Beast one of those people? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say no. Does that matter? Also no. The point is people are getting helped in the end. Charities are getting donated to. Why does it matter that they get a tax write-off? And my thinking is different than hers and that's why she's probably gonna stay small whereas I'm not because I choose to focus on the fact that now 2,000 people in this world can see again. All these charities that people are donating to and anywhere in the world outside of that, just in general, at the end of the day, people are getting help. Who cares why they're doing it? Like, should they really do it because they wanna help people and don't wanna tax write-off? I guess, but also, does it matter either way? No, it doesn't. Focusing on the positives over the negatives. Your mindset is what matters a lot. And the people that you hang around, you're gonna notice that they start to say things that you don't agree with. So once you start to uncover all these limited money mindsets and different things like that, you're gonna start to realize that what people say around you, you're like, I remember you saying that before, you've definitely said that before, that is a limiting belief that I no longer want to associate myself with. So you wanna be careful how you talk about money as well and how you think about money. If you walk around all day joking about how broke you are, the universe is gonna be like, yep, you're right, you're broke and you're gonna stay broke because the universe is always saying yes to everything. So if you look at tickets to anything, a show, a concert, whatever, and you say, I can't afford that, the universe is like, you are correct, you cannot afford that. But if you start to change your thinking and go, how can I afford this? and you start looking at different ways to start making money towards saving up for that or whatever, the universe is gonna be like, you're right, you can't afford that. And you will be able to afford that. Does this work 100% of the time? No. Is it gonna work some of the time? Yes, 100%. You're gonna be able to afford the things that you want to afford when you start to attract more positives in your life. There is so much more that I could say about money. Money is a huge, huge freaking topic. But this podcast episode was specifically to help you in changing your money mindset. And hopefully I have done that. And if you wanna learn more about how to actually make money with your newfound mindset, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create another podcast or video talking about that, but that is for a totally different video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like if you like, subscribe to my channel down below and check out another video from me right here or right here. Bye.